The Super Mario Bros. movie has finally released, with an overall okay rating from critics and outstanding support from fans online. It's obvious that this film was a success. In the box office, the film had the highest opening for any animated film to ever be released. It made more money than both Sonic movies and the highest five day opening of any movie released. So how does this film go from a concept to the actual kind of finished product? Well, today I'm going to be going over the entire history of the Mario Bros. movie. Well, like, I mean, pretty much basically it is basically like... So after the initial bombshell that was the original Super Mario Bros. movie released in 1993, Nintendo decided that it would be very, very, very overprotective of their properties for films. Which is why it took so long for us to get one, because Nintendo just didn't want to risk it. The first ever mention we got of this film happening was when Sony Pictures was hacked and all their data got leaked onto the internet in November 2014. Emails had been found from A.V. Arad, a producer, Amy Pascal, a studio chief, Tom Rothman, the head of TriStar Pictures and Michelle Raimo Kuyate, I've said that so wrong, the president of Sony Pictures Animation. The emails had focus on them attempting to get the rights to create a Super Mario Bros. movie with Nintendo for years. Around two to three separate attempts were made where Arad would visit Nintendo trying to make it happen and they were hoping they'd be able to create a Mario Empire. As Michelle, the head of Sony Pictures Entertainment, said she could think of at least three to four movies right out of the gate. After the emails were leaked online, Arad said that a deal hadn't been made and that a Super Mario Bros. movie was wasn't in development. And that seemed like it was it, until Nintendo worked with Universal to create Super Nintendo World, the theme park based around Mario himself. Whilst working on the part, Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Super Mario, met Chris Melodandri, the founder of Universal Pictures. Whilst talking, Miyamoto discovered that him and Chris had a similar creative process and that he felt like he would be the right person to finally develop the Super Mario movie. They continued talking in 2016, making sure that if both parties agreed it felt like it wasn't working out, they could stop at any moment. It went silent for a while until November 2017 when reports had emerged that Nintendo was working with Illumination and Universal to finally create the Super Mario Bros. movie. Shortly after, the president of Nintendo at the time, Tatsumi Kimishima, clarified that at the moment in time that a deal had not yet been negotiated but that an announcement was going to come soon. Kimishima said that if the deal was successful, he'd be hoping for a release in 2020. After a long time with no news about the movie, many believed that the film was never agreed upon and that it was cancelled until in January 2018 Nintendo announced that the film would be created by both Miyamoto and Melodandri. Melodandri stated that the film was Illumination's priority and that he would aiming for a 2022 release date if they were able to get it finished in time. It was well known that Miyamoto wouldn't be pushed to the side, he was going to be front and centre whilst the film was being made, making sure it was authentic to Mario as he could possibly make it. Then came another two long years with no news on the film. It was confirmed to be in the making, but there was nothing new about it. Fans feared that the film could have been scrapped and they were finding a way to break it to fans, but those fears had vanished when in January 2020, Shuntaro Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, announced that the film was moving along smoothly and that Nintendo would own the rights to the film with both companies funding the production. In August 2021, it was announced that Aaron Horvath and Michael Jenelik, the creators of Teen Titans Go, would be directing the movie. This worried fans as, you know, Teen Titans Go doesn't really have the best reputation and many feel like it wasn't good as it could have been. Nintendo and Illumination went silent for a while again until... I also wanted to reveal our key cast members who will be voicing Mario and his friends in the movie. First, of course, is Mario, who will be played by Chris Pratt. The cast of the movie had been announced. The internet went wild with Chris Pratt being the voice of Mario himself. Many mixed opinions had been posted online with fans angry that Nintendo hadn't gone with Charles Martinet. The voice of Super Mario in the video games and some feeling happy because Mario's THICK Italian accent could be annoying to hear for a full length film. Then, in September 2022, New York Comic Con announced that the movie's teaser trailer would be released on October 6th with the title being officially announced for the very first time. The Super Mario Bros. Movie. Ed Scudder, who had worked with Horvath before on Unikitty, a series based on the character from the Lego movie that ran for three seasons, was announced to have been the head of story for the film's creation. When writing the film, Horvath and Genovic both said that they wanted their work on the film to be the complete opposite of Teen Titans Go, trying to serve the most faithful adaptation of the video games with something more cinematic and emotional than what they had previously done on Teen Titans Go. Jelinek said, When people probably first heard our names attached to the movie, they expected we'd do the Teen Titans Go treatment to Mario. 
but every project we come to, we make new choices depending on who the audience is and what we're going for. Orvath reassured fans by mentioning that Nintendo was getting involved on pretty much every part of production, from story to visual development to the animation. They both agreed that instead of it following the basic story of Super Mario saving Princess Peach, they wanted the film to be more of an origin story for the brothers, portraying them as blue collar guys by making them as accurate to the source material as possible. They did this by making them Italian plumbers from Brooklyn. They decided it would make more sense for the roles of Peach and Luigi to be switched and have Mario save Luigi with the assistance of Princess Peach, as they also believed it seemed too straightforward to keep them in the roles they had in the games, whilst writing, Horvath and Janelik said they were heavily inspired by Super Mario 3D World. This meant that they wanted to keep Princess Peach as an actual character, and not just a character that was kind of pushed off to the sidelines and didn't really matter that much and just needed to be saved. They wanted her to be important to the story. Oh yeah, one part I forgot to mention, before the cast was announced, in February 2021, Charles Martinet, the original voice of Super Mario, stated that if he was to possibly voice Mario in the movie adaptation, he would go in and play with great joy and happiness, and that it would be a marvellous thing, which kind of makes me feel bad for him. The man has been voicing him for so long, and even though he didn't get to voice THE Super Mario in the movie, he was able to voice a version of Mario, Jumpman, as well as Mario's father. In August 2021, Sebastian Maniscalco revealed he would be voicing none other than Foreman Spike, Mario and Luigi's boss from the game Wrecking Crew, released in 1985. Then obviously, the eventual reveal happened, all the cast were announced, the internet went mad, and it erupted into chaos for a long amount of time, with fans arguing on whether the choices were good or not. Which in my opinion, I had faith in the entire time, and it did turn out really well. Chris Melodandri said that Chris Pratt wouldn't be voicing Mario with a thick Italian accent like Martinet did, and that when he did try an Italian accent, Carrie Payton, a voice actor, said that he sounded too close to a cousin of one of the Sopranos, a TV show based upon Italian-American mobsters. During production, Charlie Day originally voiced Luigi with a heavy New York accent. It eventually got scrapped as the directors believed it sounded too close to Goodfellas, to which Charlie replied by saying, All right, I think you're wrong, but fine. Whilst filming, the plot was kept a mystery from voice actors according to Charlie, who he said he had to record dialogue in many different ways, so he couldn't tell what scene it was being used for. Seth Rogen received criticism due to him using his normal voice for Donkey Kong instead of trying to put one on, to which he responded by saying, I was very clear that I don't do voices. If you want me to be in this movie, then it's going to sound like me, and that's it. That was the beginning and end of that conversation. I think in the film and in the game, all you seem to know about Donkey Kong is that he throws barrels and does not like Mario very much, and that's what I ran with. Personally, I didn't even think his voice was that bad. I really liked him as DK, and I think he was a good choice, whether he used a normal voice or a put-on one. Jelinek said that Illumination had updated their lighting and rendering technology just for this movie. Yeah, that's how much they were prioritising this movie. Jelinek and Horvath wanted the animation to juggle stylized animation with realism, with Horvath claiming that there are moments of cartoony fun, but we wanted it to feel like a big adventure film and that there are stakes and maybe you believe that these characters could die, so they're not super squashy and super stretchy, and we use consistent volume on the characters to make them feel a little more grounded. For any scene including carts used in the film, the directors worked with a vehicle design artist and artists at Nintendo to create carts that would fit into the film and would work if they were shoved directly into Mario Kart itself. In an interview with GameSpot, Horvath said that he and Janelik took a blockbuster approach when making the movie. He said, To me, this is a movie that's been like 40 years in the making, you know, and I've always considered Mario more of an action game. The characters look comedic, but the story is always high stakes. You gotta save the princess or save the world or whatever in the game. So we wanted to reflect that action sensibly. Both brought in artists they knew from TV and worked with them closely to help create the film, with Scudder being a big part of the Rainbow Road scenes. According to Jelinek and Horvath, Scudder had spent months working on the sequence, which was also the film's most technically challenging scene. The road itself was a visual effect, and every shot of it had to go through the visual effects department which was time consuming and expensive. In the Super Mario Bros Movie Direct streamed live on October 6, 2022, it was announced that Brian Tyler would compose the score for the film, which includes themes and references from and to the Mario games, in collaboration with game composer Koji Kondo, the artist behind such songs in the series like Dia Dia Docks, the Mario 64 staff role, the main theme for Mario 64, and many other songs within Nintendo licensing like Zelda, Smash Bros, and others. In a different interview, Jack Black announced that Bowser would have a song in the movie where he would express his emotions for Princess Peach, which is now known as Peaches, with the song making it into the top 100 on iTunes and being eligible for the best original song at this year's Oscars.
Oh yeah, if you couldn't tell, the entire song was Jack's idea. He suggested it to Illumination and Nintendo, to which they surprisingly agreed. But yeah, the film was eventually delayed from the initial release of December 21st, 2022 to the 5th of April, 2023, but they forgot to tell McDonald's as they still promoted toys for the movie that was months away from release in January. And yeah, that's pretty much the entire history of the Mario movie, I guess.